Hello and welcome to my dream charging station, or at least it's a cleanup job that I've been wanting to do for a long time, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. So um, I'm going to show you a picture of my previous charging station, this menagerie. And as you can see, uh, not very well organized and it's kind of bugging me for a long time. So I've got this alcove in my studio. It's about um, 47 inches here, but at the wall here, it's about 47 and a half. So I wanted to have a cabinet so that I could have some storage for my camera bags that I use in my day-to-day -day routine. And I wanted all this stuff cleaned up, plus some organization for other bits and pieces. And so, so far I'm quite happy with what I've accomplished. The cabinet itself is 46 inches wide by 22 inches deep. And what that allowed me to do was to build in two drawers on full extension slides. And so that gives me tons of room for these kind of little containers with uh, lots of room to grow. And the lighting for the system I got from Costco. These are Artica lights. I've used these before. I've got them in my kitchen upstairs. They come in a pack of three. They're about 25 bucks and they're just ideal for this kind of stuff. You pop one here, you got lots of light. I put another one down here and uh, I can see everything, right? So I like to have everything clearly visible. So once I got that done, then I just decided on, you know, a nice finished plywood top. I didn't need anything fancy. Put a little bit of trim on the front here, made it look good. And uh, the only other thing that you can't see is in behind the middle backpack there, there's a little cutaway for access to the receptacle that I'm going to put a little hinge door on. But other than that, that's the basis of the cabinet. And so what I wanted to do up here was clean up the power bars. And one of the things I've discovered over the years of, you know, being a photographer is that I love Antelope batteries. I've tried the Duracells, the cheap versions from Costco and Canada Computer. Forget it. So if you want a pro tip, use Antelope batteries, forget the rest. These things work 10 times better than uh, anyone, any other batteries that I found. And when you're mounting your power bars, you want to make sure you got enough space so that when I plug this thing in the bottom, I got clearance down here and the same thing I got clearance up here, right? And so the first iteration of this, you can see the power bar is mounted too high. I haven't changed it yet. I'm going to swap it out for one of these APC. The best power bars I found are these APC Surge Arrest power bars. You can get them at Costco for like 25 bucks. I'll put links in the description for you. Uh, they come with two USB charging ports, but um, let's see here. So there's six, there's three on the bottom, three on the top, and then you've got three, four, five outlets here. So you've got a ton of versatility as far as your charging goes. Whoops. Now, as photographers and videographers, hybrid shooters, whatever you want to call us, I mean, myself, I'm charging an A7 III, a Sony A6000, a G85, a GoPro, and if I add a drone to my <laughs> arsenal, it, it gets out of hand really quick. So I've set these guys up here for charging Sony uh, MPF batteries. Okay, the big heavy ones that go on the camcorders, but I use them for powering my A6000, things like that. And I just got them Velcroed in here, so it's really secure. I can see them. And the other thing I wanted to accomplish with this charging station or this revamp is so that when the things are charging, I can see the LED readouts. Just one glance, I can see whether they're charged or not. And my simple method for charging is that if they're sitting here, they're charged. If they're in the charger, they're being charged. And that's as simple as that, right? So when I bring the batteries in, I shove them into the charger right away. If they're sitting here, I know. There I go. I got one and two for my Sony A, uh, A7 III, and away we go. So <clears throat> as far as organization goes, this shelf here allows me to have, you know, a placement for all of the batteries. There's an older uh, charger for my Panasonic uh, camera. This one here is for a really old D3300. 
and then Eneloop chargers, one here, one over here. There's another Duracell. Like I said, I try the Duracells from Char uh, from Costco. I'm not impressed. I wouldn't I wouldn't waste your money on them. Um, they're there for decoration right now. I don't really use them that much. Um, but so far, I'm, I'm quite happy with the way this thing has turned out. The next thing that I wanted to show you was this uh, charger that I picked up. I can't even remember where. I'm going to have to look it up. I'll go back through my Amazon orders and I'll put a link in the description. But this thing is phenomenal. It has, let's see, four, five, six. One of these is a fast charger. Another one is uh, blue, Mark Blue for USB, uh, USB 3. And then it has a USB-C charging port. So this one can really do a lot. I use this mostly for my Rode Wireless Go 2 system because you can plug everything in at one time and charge them. And then I've got another uh, Godox charger here for the 860V2 and another one here for the 8200 Pro. And what you're seeing there with the lights is that they're, they're sensor controlled, right? So you can just wave your hand and turn them on and off. And if I hold this under here, you'll notice the, the level of light goes down. So just, you know, a lot of little fine adjustments that I made on this station. Another thing that I'll show you is these little plastic cases. You can get them from the dollar store for AA batteries. They're, they're absolutely invaluable. Um, and they're like a dollar each or two dollars each, something like that. Anything that's charged stays in these cases down below. And they're easily accessible. So if you're making money as a photographer, the, the more organized you are, uh, the more money you're going to make. Because if you're diddling around trying to find stuff all the time, like I used to do, then you're wasting time and time is money. It's as simple as that. In my original setup, I did it kind of bass backwards. Um, I had the main power supply coming from the receptacle down below. And so when I built this, the only mistake I made when I built the cabinet was I didn't leave a little door uh, to get access to the receptacle if I need it. But the reality is the two main uh, power bars are plugged in from the receptacle and the bar, so the bar is plugged in from the receptacle. And this power bar I also found at Costco. I should probably just donate half of my paycheck to Costco. Um, but the, the thing that I did differently this time is that I put the main power bar up here so that I've got all these outlets for future proofing. If I want to modify this or change it, if I buy a drone, you know, if there's some, some issues with the charging adapter, I need more space. It's going to be really easy to get it, get at it and get access to it. The other thing I've done is that all the power cords, they're all screwed into a piece of plywood here. So it keeps everything neat and out of the way. And then the power bars here are all powered from here and that keeps things a lot more organized so like i said earlier the only thing that i'm going to change uh, at this point is i'm going to have one of these over here and i'll bring this down so that i've got room for the adapters on both sides but other than that i think this is probably as organized and as neat and tidy uh, as you could possibly get it so I think there's only two things that I haven't mentioned so far, and that is, so this little white AC-DC adapter here um, is what's powering the Artica lights. And then the other thing is, if you're a Rode Wireless Go user, this is my charger here. So that's the nice thing about these surge arresters from APC is that they have two USB ports. So I've got this guy plugged in, I've got this guy plugged in for the Sony A6000, and I've got two over here, another one for the Sony and uh, for the two Sony cameras. And you know, I can just come in with a handful of batteries, put them in the chargers and walk away and then, you know, go do some post production or something like that, which I'll be doing in a second, by the way. So the other consideration I had uh, when I built this space or, you know, when I was putting this all together is what do I need every day and what can I get rid of? And I had some backpacks on the wall here and stuff that it just was poorly organized. And so that's the reason for everything down here. So that cleaned that up. So now I've got room for headphones. Now this was something here that was really handy. You know, these clamps, you're using them all the time. The Godox S2 bracket, I think I've got like, uh, I don't know, five or six of them now, but I use these things all the time, right? They're so handy. So having a place to put all this stuff just makes your life a lot easier. 
And then if you're shooting by yourself, you need to frame something up. Irma, she's got needs to have a place, right? So now she's got a place and then beauty dish on the wall behind me here. Um, I've been doing a series of videos on beauty dishes re recently. If you look at the channel, you'll see a couple of them. Um, but I have, you know, there's my Photix uh, Luna beauty dish down there. And this homemade guy fits here. And uh, these hooks here, they're just typical coat rack hooks, but they're perfect for, you know, throwing a Bowen's S mount over top. Nice and easy. It's out of the way and there's no way it's going to come down and bonk me on the head or anything like that. And then, so now what I'm doing is I've got the basic setup done pretty much the way I like it with the exception of changing this guy out. So now I'm just kind of playing around as I go. And, you know, I've got some extension cords here, some, some lighting stuff here. There's a, an R strap over here. What's on the walls will probably change in time, but, uh, and maybe, you know, what's up here is going to change as well. But for now, I think I got it pretty much the way I want it. So the whole idea of the exercise is really just to show you, give you some inspiration. Maybe, you know, you're building a studio or you've got a small space. Uh, don't think that just because you have a small space, you can't do good work. My studio is nine feet wide by 11 feet to the door from end to end. And if I open the door, I've got another 10 or 11 feet there. So I can shoot 20 feet long if I need to. But uh, most of the time, you know, for YouTube videos or for my day job work, uh, if I'm shooting video or something like that, I can get by just fine in the small space here. Okay, guys, so I hope you found this little soiree into my charging station build useful. Um, probably the two key thing, two takeaways is the Ottens charger and the APS-C surge arrestor. The Ottens charger, I'm going to put a link in the description, but there's also a new version that has a beveled face on it, a little bit easier to see, and you can charge your iPhone on the top of it as well. It's about $7 more expensive, but you can pick them up on Amazon pretty cheap. Um, so if you found the video useful, hit the subscribe and like and smash the notification bell. Uh, you'll get notified about upcoming videos. And thanks very much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.